What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talker Mets and Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get started about the remaining bullpen pitching options for the New York Mets, don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button, everybody. If you enjoy all of my content, want to see more, don't forget, guys, hit on that subscribe button, everybody. All right, so here we go. The remaining bullpen arms on the free agent market that the Mets possibly can have interest in, there's three of them that come to mind. Jeremy Jeffries, Shane Green, and Tyler Clippard. Those three guys are probably the most likely possibility when it comes to free agent bullpen arms that the Mets could use to solidify this 2021 bullpen. And the first guy that we're going to start with is Jeremy Jeffries. Now, Jeremy Jeffries pitched for Chicago last year, known pretty well probably from the Milwaukee Brewers. He's a solid arm. He's 32 years old. I think he's probably one of the, the better options left on the market, considering the other two guys. But Jeremy Jeffries, I think, could be a good piece in this bullpen when it comes to using him in probably like a fifth to six, maybe eventually sometimes in the seventh inning type of reliever. Jeffries is a good option that the Mets could look into. And when it comes to these three bullpen, on, bullpen arms, Jeremy Jeffries probably is looking for probably a two-year deal, something like that. Money-wise, is not really much out there, but I don't think he'll get more than between 7 to $10 million over two years, give or take. But Jeremy Jeffries, when it comes to his stats – what are we looking at if we if the Mets decide to go after him for the bullpen? Well, the stats look like this. We're going to go over the last uh, couple of years so we have an idea of what type of pitcher we could be getting in this Mets bullpen. In 2017, he pitched for two different teams, the Texas Rangers and Milwaukee Brewers. Now, his ERA for Texas was a 5.31, and for Milwaukee was a 3.65. In total, he pitched about 65 innings. Between the two teams, American League and National League. So, you know, he he had a little adjustment period. But when he went to from the American League to the National League, his ERA got a lot better at 3.65. You know, he had 22 strikeouts. He had 15 walks and 19 walks, depending on what team you want to look at. But in, to in all, he pitched pretty well. It wasn't too bad. You know, in, in, in all, he, in the two teams, combined ERA was a 4.68. So it wasn't great, but when he came to the National League, when he went to Milwaukee in 2017, his ERA drastically went down almost two points, which is very nice to see. It's really good to look at, especially the last couple of years, especially in the National League. Then when we look at 2018, he was an all-star. He had a 1.29 ERA in 73 games. He had 15 saves, 72, 76 innings with 89 strikeouts. That was an excellent year. I mean, he was one of the top, top guys and bullpen arms in the game. Only three years ago. It wasn't that long ago. And can he go back to this level? Well, we'll keep on looking into his uh, last couple of years with the stats to see and look at why he would be a pitcher that could come to this level again, even at the age of 32, 33 years old. So in 2019, 31 years old, he had a rough season, but you always see that with the relievers. They pitch a lot of innings the year before, like he did in 2018, and he just didn't have a good year. His ERA was 5.02 in 52 innings. He had 46 strikeouts. So you can see he pitched 52 innings, but he was used a lot in 2018. And I really think when it comes to bullpen arms, when you use them a lot, this is what happens the following year. And that's exactly what happened with a lot of arms in, in the bullpen. And this is exactly what happened to Jeremy Jeffries in 2019. But when he went to Chicago in 2020, at the age of 32, it was a whole new ball game. Now, again, 2020, you can take it with a grain of salt when it comes to Jeremy Jeffries, but he had a 1.54 ERA in 22 games, 17 strikeouts, and 23 innings. 
excellent. He he basically went back to his 2018 All-Star season, and that's really nice to see. And what can you look at when it comes to Jeremy Jeffries? Well, I would say give you something between 2018 and 2020, and I would say if you can give me like a three ERA, I take it. But to look at what type of stats he possibly could have in 2020 and his project, projected stats uh, from baseball references would look like this. At the age of 33 years old, he had a 3.84 ERA, six saves, 61 innings, and 59 strikeouts. Now, if this projected stats are the stats that he could possibly have in the Mets bullpen, I take that in a heartbeat because this would make this bullpen so much better. You know, we can we don't have to rely on Familia as much and Batanzas as much. And it, it really is a really solid option if you want to go after Jeremy Jeffries. And I think the Mets could have a lot of interest in Jeremy Jeffries over the next couple of days because they want to get these these the rest of these arms in, in the bullpen, even if it's one more arm, you want to get them into spring training, even though they've been working out you know, on their own, you want to get them into the team. You want to get them into spring training. So Jeremy Jeffries is the first option uh, the Mets could look at for a reliever in the bullpen. The next arm that we're going to be talking about is Shane Green. Now, Shane Green pitched for Atlanta the last two seasons. He was very solid. I think he could be just as good, if not better, than Jeremy Jeffries. He's a year younger than Jeremy Jeffries, but Shane Green is a solid option that would possibly get into that Mets bullpen. And I actually really like Shane Green. I think that he can be one of the better bullpen arms that the Mets actually have And besides May. And I don't think there's many other really good options in the bullpen that I trust in the Mets bullpen, but I feel like I could trust Shane Green in the Mets bullpen, no doubt, especially in the later innings. Now, when Shane Green, and when we look at his stats over the last couple of years, they look something like this. Now, in 2017, he pitched for Detroit. He had a 2.66 ERA, 71 games, nine saves, 67 innings, and he had 73 strikeouts. Really good year. He was 28 years old. Good year. Yeah, it was a couple of years ago, but just giving you an idea of what you can possibly see in a guy like Shane Green. Now, in 2018, he was still with Detroit. He had a 5 ERA. Again, he pitched a lot of innings in that in that uh, in 2017. And again, this we see with bullpen arms all the time. He struggled in 2018 with a 5.12 ERA, 63 innings. 65 strikeouts. Again, it's just something that you see with bullpen arms. But again, after the, the year that he struggled, the, just like with Jeremy Jeffrey, Shane Green in 2019 was an all-star when he pitched for two different teams, Detroit and Atlanta. And it was a big move for Atlanta in 2019 when they acquired him from Detroit. And when we look at the total uh, ERA in 2019, he had a 2.30 ERA. In 62 innings with 64 strikeouts. That was a great, really great addition to the to the Braves bullpen. And he was one of their best relievers in 2019. And that's something that I think we can really look at as Mets fans for this bullpen. He pitched really well for Detroit. Now, granted, he didn't pitch well with the Braves, but he was still a big part of this bullpen when they brought him in. He did struggle in 27 games, but it really, I really feel like when he went from Detroit and they became into a, went to a contender in Atlanta, I felt like that he might've not been used as properly as he should have. But again, if, you look two years ago with Detroit, he had a 1.18 ERA. And and when we look into 2020, you'll see why I think it was a good pickup for the Atlanta Braves. Because in 2020, it seems like he calmed himself down. He was relaxed. Another, another year with the Braves, he pitched very well. 
At the age of 31, he had a 2-6 ERA, 27 innings, and 20 strikeouts. Now, again, 2020 was a shortened season, so look at look at look at that how you want. But in my opinion, I really think that he can actually be pretty solid for this Mets bullpen. He's younger out of the other two guys in Tyler Clippard and Jeremy Jeffries, but he is one of the solid options. And the guy that I like the most out of these three is Shane Green. Now, when it comes to Shane Green and his projected stats in 2021, what could we actually look at when we say, okay, you know what? I take that. Maybe the Mets could use him as a nice bullpen piece and that arm that we can use in a bullpen until Lugo comes back. Well, in 2021, at the age of 32, 3.84 ERA, he would have 67 strikeouts and 68 innings and 11 saves. Now, saves you can probably not really look at much, but again, it's another option that you could use as a closer, knowing that Shane Green has closed before. And he saved games for Detroit and the Braves. That's a good possibility to have and an option to have, especially when you don't have Lugo for at least two months. So the second guy the Mets could possibly have interest in for the Mets bullpen is none other than Shane Green. One of my, f- one of the guys that I expect and that I really want the Mets to go after for the last piece to solidify this bullpen in 2021. The last guy that is on this list as a reliever free agent for this bullpen is a good old friend in Tyler Clippert. We know about Tyler Clippert when it came to the Mets acquiring acquiring him in 2015. And I feel like he's much older than the other guys and he hasn't pitched really well, but you're going to say, did he pitch well? Yes. (laughs) Ha ha. That's one thing that I was shocked at when I looked at his stats too. Because, you know, he's not a young man. He's 35 years old. But when I looked at his stats, I'm like, wow. I'm like, you know what? He actually pitched really well. And then I'm like, all right, you know what? I think this could be a good option. Why not bring back an old friend who is actually solid the last couple of years? So I looked at it and I'm like, okay, what can we look at when it comes to Tyler Clippert and his stats the last couple of years. So his stats look like this. In 2017, with the White Sox, he had a 1-8 ERA, and he pitched very well. Now, again, when we look at it, he pitched for two different te- a couple of different teams, the Yankees, the, uh, the White Sox, but in total he had a 2 e- uh, I'm sorry, a 4.77 ERA. He was all right, but when he went to the White Sox, they really could use him. And man, did he pitch well. He had a 1.0 ERA with them. And with Houston, he struggled. <laughs> and he had a 6 ERA, over a 6 ERA. That wasn't very good either. But again, he went to, if you count it, he went to one, two, three different teams over the course of one year. I don't care who you are. If you're a pitcher that is getting moved around like a freaking pinball, you're probably going to struggle. But in between the Yankees and Houston, he pitched very well with a 1.8 ERA. And when he went to Houston, he struggled a lot. But I think that moving around so much just really caused him to probably just be exhausted. (laughs) I mean, he pitched a lot of innings. So, you know, he pitched over 50-something. Let's see. If you look at it right here, he pitched – yeah, he pitched, he pitched a lot of innings, so it's not really worth looking at too much because they overworked him no matter where he went. But when you look at 2018 and he went, he went to Toronto, here he goes pitching well again. He had a 3.67 ERA, 85 strikeouts, 68 innings. Another solid season for Tyler Clippert at the age of 33. Very good yet again. We're going to look at 2019 with the Cleveland Indians. 2.90 ERA. Now he's getting older, but he's 34 years old. 2.90 ERA with 62 innings, 64 strikeouts in 53 games. 
again, another solid reliever at the age of 34 where he pitched really well. And again, when I looked at Tyler Clifford, I was a little shocked when I saw his stats the last couple of years, how well he pitched. In 2020, with the Minnesota Twins, he had a 2.77 ERA in 26 games, 26 innings, and 26 strikeouts. Yet again, he pitched even better in 2020. Now, you can say, all right, but he, would he pitch well going in the age 36-year-old season? Well, I think he could still be very good. And when you look at his projected stats in 2021, you look at him, you'll see it right here. A 3.84 ERA with two saves, 68 innings, and 70 strikeouts. That's another solid season. If you look at his projected stats by baseball references, he is a solid option also. So when the three options that we're looking at, Tyler Clippert, even if the Mets want to go to the cheapest route, Tyler Clippert will be the cheapest route compared to Tyler Clippert and Jeremy Jeffries. Tyler Clippert could be another option. He might be the third option on the list, but the Mets might be looking to save a little money and acquire and sign Tyler Clippert. That's an option. Probably only can get him on a one-year deal, which would probably be probably what the Mets are looking for. Shane Green and Jeremy Jeffries might be looking for a multi-year deal. And Tyler Clippert could be a very good, solid, sneaky good arm just by looking at his stats the last couple of years. And I will take his stats in 2021 with Tyler, Tyler Clifford in this Mets bullpen. This is my take on the three reliever options the Mets could possibly have interest in over the coming days. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notifications when I post my videos and when I go live, hit on that subscribe button, everybody. I want to thank you guys for your support. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, let's go Mets.